Welcome back everyone. I have yet to do this video on my main channel, but I figured these things are super important of people who are about to sell or resell their MacBook. And whether you have a MacBook, iMac, the process is pretty much the same thing. And I'll go ahead and show you guys exactly how to fully reset your MacBook before you go and actually, you know, resell it to somebody else. Now, first of all, what I always recommend doing is cleaning out your iMac and MacBook or whatever, you know, getting a cloth and just kind of wiping it down. Don't get it like too wet or anything. And just like clean the screen. And just kind of clean the body off a little bit. I wouldn't really touch the screen, but make it look a little bit better. So by the time the person gets it, it looks a little bit better in my opinion. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to create a backup. Now, Apple has a really good support page for this, and I'll leave a link down below. And I'm basically reading out their steps here. And creating a backup is very important. I've sold a couple of MacBooks like back in the day. And even just as a good practice, it's good to make time machine backups. So I will make a video on my second channel on how to do a time machine backup, but it's really easy. You can just Google how to create a time machine back and go from there. It's pretty basic. And I would not recommend going any further until you do that, because just in case something happens, just in case the plan doesn't go right, or in case you're buying another MacBook and you know we need to restore, you need to have that backup there. So make sure you have some sort of backup or even an iCloud backup of whatever, of whichever files you have that are very important. The second thing that's recommended is signing out of your iTunes on your macOS devices. Now, it's only for macOS Mojave or earlier because, you know, after macOS Mojave with Catalina and Big Sur, they removed iTunes in favor of files. So in order to do this, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and open up iTunes. You want to choose your account, which is up top. You want to choose authorizations and you want to deauthorize this computer. That's what it basically says. It'll prompt you to basically type in your Apple ID and password and you want to click deauthorize. And the reason for this is because iTunes, I think, only allows you to have like seven iTunes accounts, you know, basically seven Macs or whatever you can have. So you want to make sure you deauthorize just because of, you know, if you want to use iTunes. The second thing that I always do because it's just really good practice is signing out of iCloud because even though if you erase it or whatever, maybe it'll come up, maybe it won't. Sometimes you might forget to do this and then you go ahead and reset the MacBook and then you ship it off to the person and then they're like, oh, you have to sign out of your iCloud, your iCloud's still logged in. It's happened to me one time and it was very annoying and awkward. So in order to sign out of your iCloud, what you want to do is you want to click that Apple menu that's on the top left, very top left, it's always there. You want to click System Preferences. You want to click your Apple ID and then there's going to be an overview little tab in the sidebar then you want to click sign out and that's how you do it for the newer versions of mac os if you're on mac os mojave or earlier which i'm sure most of you are you want to click the apple menu system preferences you want to click icloud then you want to click sign out and then it'll ask you a bunch of stuff if you want to keep a copy of it or whatever i say usually i usually say no but you can go and say yes because i already made that time machine backup that backed up everything early on so the next thing what you want to do is sign out of imessage and you can sign out of facetime too but usually it doesn't really matter. So in order to do this, what you want to do is you want to open up the messages app. You want to hit preferences that's on the top bar. You want to click iMessage, then you want to sign out of iMessage. And once you do that, most of your stuff is pretty much set. As long as you know you have a backup and you sign out of these important things, most of the things are pretty much good to go. You can just go ahead and reset it from here. Now they do say so these two optional things. Now the first thing is the reset the NVRAM. I've never done this. You can go ahead and do it if you want to, and I'll just go and explain to you how to do it. You want to shut down your MacBook. You want to turn it on, so press the power button, but at the same time, you want to hold these four keys together, and they're the option, command, P, and R. So you want to hold those at the same time, and you want to hold them down for about 20 seconds or so. That's what they recommend. And then it says this clears out all the settings and memory stores, whatever, and then it'll basically reset from there, and then you're good. The other thing is you can unpair your Bluetooth devices. Now, sometimes it doesn't matter. I usually just reset it and go from there. However, sometimes if you have like a magic keyboard or other things like that, sometimes there may be some issues where it won't connect to another one if you already have it connected to one iMac or MacBook or whatever. So keep that in mind as well. Not a big deal, but you can go and do it if you want to. And then at this time, this is where we erase our hard drive and we reinstall Mac OS. So in order to do this, what you want to do is you want to power down your MacBook and you want to start up your Mac in Mac OS recovery mode. And to do this, like I said, turn off your Mac and you want to hold down these two keys together. You want to hold down the command and R buttons at the same time. And eventually you'll see a little spinny logo. It might redirect you to type in the password or something, but it's never made me do that before. And then at this point, you'll be presented basically into that main screen. And you'll have a couple different options. It'll stay, it'll say restore from time machine, reinstall Mac OS, get help online and disk utility. Now the one I always click is disk utility. And from here, what you want to do is you want to find the one that says view. And what you want to do is you want to click view and you want to show all the devices in the menu bar. Now at this point, the sidebar will show you your disk and everything else that you have with it. And you want to find the one that's your startup disk. Now in this case, on the Mac OS on Apple's website, it says Apple SSD is a startup disk. Sometimes it's been a little different, but a great way to tell is under the capacity. If that has the most amount of storage, 
and it shows like, oh, this one, this is taking up an X amount of storage and it's showing like a lot, then that's usually the startup disk. So what you want to do is you want to find that one and you want to click erase, which is in the top bar. And then I'll ask you a couple things. You want the name to be the name of whatever you have. So usually that's already there. You want the format. You can either choose, you want the format to be APFS or Mac OS extended journaled. It'll probably show you that anyway. In the scheme, you want to choose GUID partition map. Usually I never had to change any of these things, but if for some reason it doesn't match up what I have on the screen, they can go from there. Then at this point, you want to click erase and you can go and click erase and it'll erase everything on your Mac. And at this point, you can quit desk utility whenever that's done erasing. And now you want to reinstall Mac OS. So what you want to do is you want to go back into disk utility, which is your main screen right there. And you want to hit the one that says reinstall Mac OS. And at this point, it'll usually take a couple seconds for it to register. It might tell you to connect to the Wi-Fi or whatever. And then at this point, whatever your MacBook shipped with, so if it's shipped with, you know, Mac OS Catalina or Mac OS Mojave, it'll go ahead and prompt you to re-download that software. And then from there, you just pretty much go ahead and go through that. It'll take a while. You know, this whole entire process takes a long time, especially if you want to restore from your time machine backup, because that's going to take a long time. That always takes me like a couple hours to do. So that's another pretty big thing to keep in mind. So, so this is an easy process, but it just takes a couple of minutes to do. However, at this point, once it's, you know, fully reinstalled with Mac OS, you're pretty much set. You can go ahead and ship it off. You don't have to restore your data because, you know, if you're restoring it, if you had to erase it because of a problem or whatever, then that's separate. But if you're shipping it off, they can go ahead and ship it off and be set from there. Now that's pretty much done for that tutorial, right? There's another quick thing that I want to say. If you have a volume on your disk, so if you have multiple disk drives or whatever, you can also raise those two from the disk utility. So a way to do this is go into disk utility. You want to find the volume that you want to erase. Now, mine personally, I do have different volumes on mine, but you want to find the one that says Macintosh HD or your name HD or whatever it is. You do not want to find the one that says data. If you click the one that says data, it's not going to do it right. So you want to find the one that says, you know, your name or HD or your max name in HD. And it's usually under the internal storages. Me personally, I do have this specific situation going on with my MacBook. So this is what I usually have to do. So at this point, you just want to go ahead and click erase again. And you want to erase volume group. And usually at this point, it fixes everything. And you want to make sure the same things that I said before are compatible in this specific case. You know, you want to say it's the name is the name, the format APFS. That's usually what I have it as and it's worked for me. So again, another big thing to keep in mind, not a deal breaker, but it is something to keep in mind at the end of the day. And at this point, you click erase volume group. Everything will be good there and you can quit disk utility and then you can go ahead and reinstall Mac OS from there too. So that is pretty much the process. Again, nothing too crazy to do. As long as you follow these steps to the T, then you'll be set. Again, I will note if these instructions were too hard to follow or you get lost, I will leave Apple's website, their support website linked down below. It'll be the first link down there. So you can go and click that and it'll explain to you exactly how to do it in this case. So that's really pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button. That would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.